Hey guys, Yuri Ezef Seer for CSM Practice. Thanks for joining us today. I'm super stoked about this video because I have Brian Hartley, Senior Director of Customer Success at a company called RFPIO, who's going to share how does he recruit first-time CSMs? So if you're in the market to switch to a CSM position and you've never done this before, or you're a hiring manager looking to find these precious treasures that you know nobody even thinks about hiring, but they're going to be amazing CSMs, this video is for you. Stick around. Hey guys, so we have, like I said, Brian Hartley. Brian, welcome to our channel and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this important topic. Yeah, glad to be here and can't wait to dive in. So Brian, you shared with me before we recorded this video that you actually once hired a flight attendant that resulted in becoming one of your best CSMs. Tell me about this story. Yeah, this particular flight attendant had been furloughed with the pandemic. Obviously, a lot of people in that industry lost their their jobs temporarily. And she was really passionate about the tech space. She wanted to get in the tech space and customer success appealed to her because there was a lot of fundamental concepts around, you know, dealing with customers and dealing with problems and problem solving and conflict resolution. We took a shot at interviewing her and her passion and her tenacity around getting it right and making sure that the customer had their needs met really came through in the interview, even though she didn't have customer success, like that traditional experience we'd look for. And she has been phenomenal because we were able to teach her the fundamentals of customer success when she got in the door, the product, the application technology, but where she really excelled is she's able to handle conflict really well. In fact, sometimes there's a really angry customer. I said, Hey, everything okay? Are you doing okay? Trust me, this is fine. This is far easier than maybe dealing with a passenger in first class. And it just kind of the light bulb went off. And I thought this is really a great diamond in the rough that we found. And she's been a phenomenal employee, very passionate, very loyal, very proactive, all the things you look for. I think this all boils down to as a hiring manager, what are you looking for in a customer success manager? Because obviously like the requirement to be in this space for a few years, we see a lot of job descriptions now to say, hey, you have to have this experience as a CSM. But mm -hmm. you're saying, no, let's put that aside. Let's take a look at specific skills. What are yep. the skills that you're looking for? So what we're looking for is communication skill. Can you communicate well? And that's whether that's written or oral, those are really fundamental things that we're looking for. Are you proactive? So do you seek out and find solutions to problems that maybe others haven't seen? And are you able to take advantage of that? Conflict resolution is a big one because if you're dealing with customers day in and day out, you're going to be thrown many different things that you're going to have to deal with. How do you handle that? Are you able to handle it on your own or are you going to be quick to escalate it to your manager because you're not comfortable handling it. So those are some of the traits we really hone in on when we're interviewing and reviewing resumes. And so you look at people in the service industry or flight attendants or whatever it might be. I mean, they're doing that day in and day out. They're dealing with people, even though maybe it's just an individual customer, maybe it's not a B2B model, but those traits are really important for us because we know that if they can handle that. We can train the rest of the job and the, the company and to get the complete package with them to be successful. How many team members do you currently have, Brian? So currently today at RPIO, I have about 30 CSMs and then there's a couple of frontline managers. So all in all 30 and, and they span so many different verticals. You know, some have previous CS experience, some are flight attendants or worked in event marketing. So it's kind of a really good mix to create this dynamic team with different perspectives. Mm. But what's the ratio like between those that actually came with CSM experience and those who did not? I would say it's probably a 60-40 split. So 60 had some type of prior CS experience that we know today versus 40%. Maybe came from a non-traditional, you know, maybe it was an account management, maybe it was the flight attendant, like I mentioned. That's a, a significant ratio. Yeah. So maybe you can kind of break it down to me. Let's dwell a little bit into Brian's head and what <laughs> is your strategy for hiring customer success managers and specifically, I mean, this market is so active for hiring customer success managers. I don't blame you for actually looking for people who can have like fundamental skills to become a great CSM and then train them. So 
What is your approach for hiring and retaining the best talent? As a member of RPA, I'm fortunate to have a great recruiter that I work with. She really has a lot of good experience in seeking out and knowing what it is that we need and looking for those soft skills that are really important to us. And she's also totally comfortable fielding any and all resumes so that we're not disqualifying people up front because they don't have a set number of years for that particular skill set that we're looking for. So she does a really good job of looking for those individuals. And so what ends up coming my way are people with diverse backgrounds and diverse work histories that at the end of the day, when we're interviewing them, they really do have something that they can add and complement the the larger team. So I would say to, to answer your question, it's kind of your traditional channels of job posting that you know everyone knows about today, but it's also trying to get creative and figure out what other job sites or what other areas or universities or whatever it might be to help build that talent pipeline and at least get the name out there. Hey, RPA is a great place you can come grow your career as a CS individual and and be successful. Okay, so hiring agencies, the key to your success, per my experience, I worked with those before, it really depends on what you communicate to the hiring agent to even say, hey, I don't mind people that don't have a CSM background. Please mm -hmm. also publish in universities or these markets. Do you actually have a strategic conversation with that hiring agent and maybe even gave them a list of your hiring business requirements. Yeah. So since our recruiter, she's actually internal, I should have mentioned she's internal. So it helps that I can just, you know, slack her or get on a meeting. So we talk about the strategy and then we're also really, you know, you go back to the competitive market. We're also very cognizant of what is the market dictating and commanding in terms of on-target earnings and salaries. So I'm constantly sharing data with her that I've gotten third-party sources. And she's also recording data as well. Hey, we lost out on this really good candidate. Here's why. So now we have this story to tell. We can go back to leadership and say, hey, we, we probably need to reevaluate how we're approaching compensation. So she's just really sharp in that regard and data collection. For those who are watching this video at CSM Practice, we actually compiled a list of the most recommended CSM recruiters in the market, including Europe, Israel, and the US, of course. So if you're anywhere in the world and want to recommend additional recruiters to us, direct message me or put it on the comments of this video and we'll update the workbook that we share with everyone. Go ahead and check the YouTube description for the link if you want to take on Brian's approach. Okay, before you even approach the recruiter, how do you really forecast the need for CSM and how much would you be needing to recruit? If you liked what you've heard so far, that's awesome. More coming in a second here. But in the meantime, I want you to click that like button so that YouTube knows that this is great content and you can start sharing it with others. Great question and great timing because since we were acquired at the same time, we're going through a huge resegmentation exercise. So we're actually splitting out multiple teams. We're creating new segments to handle enterprise, mid market, and SMB customers. And so within that exercise, we were able to get a really good feel for well, what do we need? So we're growing and continue to grow at a really rapid clip. How can we best? serve the needs of the customers, but knowing that we wouldn't be able to hire in a linear fashion. Like we're not going to be able to hire CSMs to have a nice, comfortable book of 50 customers like that. We just can't scale that. So we had to get really creative and figure out what is the engagement strategy for each of these segments, enterprise, higher touch, more like love, mid-market, some of the same, but you're able to manage more customers doing some of the same characteristics. And then SMB, which is our newest segment, it's going to be one to many digital tech touch led focus. And so once we did those exercises, we were able to figure out, all right, what do we need right now? And so we have a couple of, you know, we have a handful of openings that are posted right now. And then what does that look like next year? If the company say wants to grow 60%. So just doing some numbers and trying to figure out, well, what does that look like from a logo standpoint? And then working with the sales team to figure out well, what is the pipeline looking like? And then backing that up, well, how do we want to engage with each of those segments so that we don't find ourselves getting into, well, we need another six or seven this quarter. Like we don't, we're trying to avoid that to some degree and trying to use our process and tools to help create an experience that complements the CSMs that are already in place. Yeah, definitely a very strong, valid approach. I actually interviewed the CCO at Adaptive Insights, which is a company that sells planning and budgeting tools. And she walked us through her spreadsheet in that webinar. So basically, she first segmented the customers and had a specific CSM to customer ratio for each segment. And then she asked the sales team to say, 
well, how many customers are you expecting per each segment? And she says, well, if I have one CSM for every 25 customers and you're expecting another 100, I need to hire four CSMs for the next year or so. So that's that's basically the approach. And I think you're saying the same thing. First, yeah. figure out your ratios, your segments and your ratios, work with sales, and then backtrack it to, well, what are your hiring plans? Well, and I think too, what, what that also leads to the, in another riddle that we're all trying to solve is, all right, at the end of the year, what data can we show to leadership? Say, hey, your investment in CS was worth it. Here's here's yeah. how we yeah. prove that to you versus just another warm body there to be reactionary and pick up the phone and you know listen to a customer. You have your specific CS KPIs and success cases you obviously share with a management team. Correct. I think you should also prove that your CSS ratio is, is reasonable. Exactly. Yeah. I can't tell you, and I'm sure you being in, in the consulting world, I mean, everyone's trying to figure out like, what is the rate? And there's just so many variation and so many variables at play in that you could, I don't think one size fits all, obviously, because everyone is different and the same for RFPIO. Before we continue, don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash that notification button so that you don't miss out on any new videos. You talk about segmentation and CSM ratios and proving that the CSM ratio is correct. A lot of times I hear executives say, well, when I first do the initial big hiring, I don't have historical data to prove that the ratio is correct. So what I need to do is go back and look at what the research is telling me, what do we see as market trends. So we actually looked at our research and research of uh, TSIA, which is an organization that does benchmark data and surveys and research about customer success and other services that technology companies are need to be able to grow correctly. And we put it all in this document for just, you know, any CS executive that is looking to start from something to kind of go back to management and say, well, this is what we're seeing in the market. Does this segmentation seem reasonable? I know you probably have different ratios. Maybe walk us through your ratios yeah. and if this in general looks sane. Generally speaking, it, there's a lot of similarities. And again, you know, what's interesting for me is I'm coming into an exercise that was already in motion. So when we were acquired, they'd already been thinking about this and putting the pillars into place. And then I came in and took over and then kind of executing on the plan and, and providing input where I can. But the enterprise segment for us is, you know, we define it, we split it by ARR, which is a shift. Before it was, it was employee count, right? So if your logos had over 5,000 employees and you were enterprise, even if you only spent, you know, five yeah. grand, which, you know, there's so many different schools. So we, we switched to ARR. So enterprise is 25 grand or higher for annual spend. Okay. And that ratio is about one to 25 to 30. That makes sense, by the way. So those who are watching, some companies, that's their tech touch. Companies like Salesforce, below 250, your SMB. Right. But in some companies where the average or the ARPU, right, is lower, then you have to just take, you know, your 2080, meaning the top 20% that give you 80% of your revenue, roughly, to say, this is my high touch. That's what you did. That's why it's 25K. So don't take the 25K per verbatim, just because it's lower, relatively speaking, to maybe other companies that sells in half a billion or sorry, half a million or a million. Uh, it makes sense that your high touch is actually what we call mid touch, but that's your highest touch because you need to protect that revenue. Exactly. So the mid market then is kind of a, obviously below that threshold. And I think between 12 and 25, generally speaking, and that ratio is a little bit higher. It's about one to 70 or 80. The other thing I should mention too, is part of our segmentation exercise is we're splitting out and removing onboarding and putting it over to the professional service team. That's great. So that's freeing up the CSMs. My, what I'm really curious about is, Hey, we're freeing up what you were telling us was your most time consuming task. So now are you, how are you going to drive and add value day in and day out? Because you don't have to worry about all the onboarding activities you did prior. So I think our ratios, in my opinion, sh we should be able to flex upward, I would think, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the data is. I like it, Brian. And I also want to point out in this model, assuming higher ARR, it's 115 jumping three times to 150 to the lower segment, which is exactly what you've done. You had mm -hmm. one to 25, 130, and then you jumped it to 175, three times as much. So it still is very consistent. And I just wanted to show 
don't take the pyramid for a right. Like definitely might make sense. So thank you for, so much for sharing. So now that you have this ratio, first time around, you didn't need to argue, well, these are the right ratios because you came into an existing organization that already had some history, but you yeah. do need to prove, okay, so you have the plan in place. You have an awesome recruiter. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges you're expecting? Are you held accountable to actually fill in those seats? To have a full team? Uh, yes, I am. So the challenge is, like I'm sure most companies would agree with, is it is a hot market as an employee looking for a position. And the salaries that are being, especially now in the remote world where you, you know, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, I can now work for a lot of companies that I couldn't prior to the pandemic. And those companies, whether they're based on the West or East Coast, you know, they're still paying that type of salary. So for someone in the Kansas City market, getting those types of offers with the opportunity to still work remote is really lucrative. And we are really cognizant of that. And we, so a couple of things, one is we've done a lot of research into salary bands. So we kind of follow that model. We looked at different markets, different levels of the CSM based on your experience to make sure that we were playing ball and being competitive. But we also know that there are a lot of companies with a lot of budget to spend on CSMs and we're, we just simply couldn't compete in those areas. So we had to get creative. And so for us, it is again, finding talent that maybe isn't a traditional CS background, and then also trying to, to sell them on the story, the entire journey, right? We want to just sell the complete picture to candidates so they know what they're getting when they do join the CS function. And a big part of that too is the learning and education. So when you come on board, here's how we're going to not only educate you on just the job we want you to do, but ideally I'm big on it. Let's learn about the CS practice. Let's learn about customer success. What does it mean? What does it mean for you? How have you done it? What can you do to make it better here? So that one day when you move on, you will have a lot of CS experience that you can carry on throughout your career. Excellent. So what I'm hearing you say is if I'm a customer success executive looking to hire untraditional, maybe talent to fill in my CSM seats, I need to have have a budget plan, my segmentation's right, work with sales to figure out what's the forecast like, have an awesome recruiter that I actually very explicitly say what it is that I'm looking for and uh, discuss the strategies, boast about my company. And then when I finally hire them, have a plan on how you're going to train them. And that brings me back to, listen, everybody needs to document the team charter. What are your KPIs? What are your processes? Yeah playbooks yeah. so that they can be successful. hundred percent. And especially if you're in a startup or a fast growing company where a lot of those things come after you've added the people. So we've been fortunate to hire a CS ops person. And we're going to get some enablement people on the board. So those individuals will really be able to help define all those things that you mentioned, really edit and make our charter what it needs to be so that we can new candidate sits on their desk day one or at their home desk, here you go. Here's what you can expect. And I think that goes a long way. I, I mean, I'm a big proponent, again, non-traditional backgrounds. And I think you could still create a dream team by going that approach. And I say that because I've had that experience and it's been really rewarding for me. Such an important topic, Brian. I think there's like a ton of tactical <laughs> advice yeah. for first time CSMs or people that are looking to be a first time CSM or <laughs> managers are looking to hire first time CSMs. Guys, some resources to help you out. Like I said, the CSM recruiters list, I'm going to include it in the YouTube description, the pyramid, the segmentation pyramid and those guidelines. Feel free to download that as well. I'm going to include that in the description. I'm also going to include two links to other videos. One is how to hire a CSM. We actually broke down the process and the entire framework for you in a separate video. So check that out. And the budget webinar, how do you budget for hiring CSMs? Brian, you've been so, so wonderful. I really appreciate your time. I know how busy you are. So thank you so much for contributing your knowledge and expertise to our customer success community. Guys, if you have a recruiter you'd like to recommend, put it in the comments below and like this video if you learned something new and subscribe to help our channel grow. Thank you so much. I will see you guys on the next video.